Hello and welcome back to Scope. Today coming to you from tropical Townsville. You know, a clever marketing person once said, Queensland, beautiful one day, perfect the next. Why well, go one step further and say it's beautiful one day and perfect the next. Perfect storm the day after that. And by perfect storm, I mean tropical cyclone. As its name suggests, these types of weather events are unique to areas that are, well, tropical. In Australia, that covers northern Queensland, across the coastal region of the Northern Territory and into Western Australia. Of course, one of the biggest problems with cyclones are the really fierce winds. They can be so strong that they can just flatten buildings within seconds, in extreme cases. But what if, what if a team of engineers got together to design buildings better so they could withstand these forces of nature? Now that would be a good idea. Have you ever heard this? It's the warning authority sound when a cyclone is coming. And this is what people often hear when a cyclone strikes. Hi, I'm Dr. David Henderson, and here at the Cyclone Testing Station at James Cook University, we're helping make homes and buildings cyclone tough. The Cyclone Testing Station was established in 1977, so engineers like me could get a better understanding of how we can make our houses resist the impacts from cyclones. But what is a cyclone? How do they form? And why can they be so devastating? Tropical cyclones are low pressure systems that form over warm tropical waters. They could be called hurricanes or typhoons in other parts of the world. Cyclones produce gale force winds, heavy rain and flooding. Cyclones have five categories. The lower the pressure, the stronger the wind, the higher the rating. A Category 1 cyclone is usually just a strong storm with winds up to 125 kilometres an hour. But at the other end of the scale is a Category 5 system. They're the ones that cause the most damage. In 2011, Cyclone Yazi struck far north Queensland with approximately 250 kilometre an hour winds. It left a damage bill of $3.6 billion. But what if we could find ways to make sure our homes and buildings could stand up to the test of Mother Nature? Well, that's where this wind tunnel comes in. The CTS Boundary Layer Wind Tunnel simulates on a smaller scale the turbulence, gustiness and load cycles of a cyclone. It's kind of like the waves at the beach. The model inside the tunnel is subjected to the pressures from the pushing and pulling. This helps us determine the amount of peak loads, the numbers of load cycles that the cyclone subjects our housing to. By taking the information that we've learned from the wind tunnel, we can scale up those pressures to the real world and test building products and systems in our airbox. In this case, we've got roof cladding as our test material. The airbox applies this fluctuating pressure to make sure our roofing can withstand this 10,000 load cycles that our houses are subjected to during a cyclone. Wind-driven debris is another aspect of severe storms and cyclones, and we can test to protect our doors and windows from this wind-driven debris. Watch as this high-speed camera captures the impact wind forces have on the structure. A shutter or screen protecting the window doesn't necessarily need to be stiff. In fact, having a bit of flexibility helps absorb some of the intense impact loading. But the screen needs to be away from the window, so when the screen does deflect, it doesn't break the very thing it's trying to protect. This research gains us the knowledge to design and construct our buildings to resist cyclonic winds for the future. Already our studies have led to amendments in building codes, such as improvements in wind loading standards for housing, better roof tiles and cladding, and roller door standards. We may never be able to fully combat the might of Mother Nature, but with the Cyclone Testing Station, we can be ready with anything she throws, or rather blows, our way.